Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here, and today I'm bringing you my Premier League predictions week 9, is it? I think it is, but anyway, let's get into this. So, we kick off with a huge game. We've got Spurs going up against Jürgen Klopp's Liverpool. Now, in this game, Liverpool have a number of injuries. I think Firmino's injured, Gomez is injured, the, the young, promising uh, defender that they did have. I was so, uh, sorry to hear that, to be honest. Because he's young and we've obviously had Luke Shaw injured and I know for a season it's really, really bad. Rivalries aside, all right, it's never nice seeing you young prospects getting injured. So, uh, yeah, I was a bit disappointed to hear that, even though they are our greatest rival. But anyway, uh, Ings is also out for the season. So, does this mean that Origi will get a chance, all right? Because I doubt Klopp's going to be playing 4-3-3. I reckon they'll play two up top, Sturridge. Is not injured. Out of all the injured players, Sturridge is fit, all right? That's just hilarious. But anyway, Origi will probably partner him, I would have thought. Coutinho, slight chance of playing again. He might be injured. Uh, Klopp might not want to risk him. But it's also going to be see interesting to see what other players kind of play that are fit. Because who, who does Klopp rate and who doesn't he? Because I'm sure in January and in the summer he'll be doing the first stages of his overhaul. But on to Spurs, all right? They've been absolutely fantastic recently, all right? And that's due to the performances of Lloris and I'd say Ericsson, all right? Kane's starting to find some form. All right, Dyer was pretty good as well, but I think he's unavailable, isn't he? So uh, Lamella's also coming into form, which is crazy. So this game's going to be really, really entertaining. But I think because of the injuries and because it's away, I'm going to go with Spurs. I'm going to say they're going to win 2-1, although anything can happen. And I know that's such cliche, but it's true. All right, this one's hard to predict. Depends which Spurs turn up and which Liverpool turn up. Are they going to feel, you know, I, I don't even know the word. Are they going to feel fired up because of Klopp or are they just going to, be hindered because of all the injuries. But anyway, on to game two. Chelsea up against Aston Villa. And if Chelsea don't win this, are they even going to get top six? All right, like if they do not beat Aston Villa at home, then what the fuck is going on? They have to beat Aston Villa, all right? And that's just to make sure that they're, you know, getting inside the top four, let alone what Fabregas said, and that's they can still win the title. I highly doubt that. They're, what, 15th, 16th? And, yeah, if they go on an unbeatable streak towards the end of the season, then, yeah, they, they, they could win the league. But that would require them to go unbeaten for the rest of the season, I think. So, um, yeah, but y you've just got to think. Surely one or two of the players that have underperformed are going to perform in this match. All right, I know Matic was sent off in international duty. Hazard, I think, scored a penalty and then missed one. If I'm correct, I could be wrong there, but I think that's what happened. Uh, Vanovic has picked up a knock, so all Chelsea fans are celebrating because Mourinho cannot pick him. And they think that he'll pick Baba Roman. But the rumours within the Chelsea camp is that Zuma is going to play on the right. So will that work? Will it not? We'll have to wait and see. But surely they can beat Villa. All right. No disrespect to Aston Villa. But they have been really, really poor. I predicted them to finish about 13th, 14th. But they are struggling at the minute. And Tim Sherwood really... Man, he, he just looks deflated, all right? So if they could get a point against Chelsea, that would be absolutely fantastic for the morale. But it's at Stamford Bridge, you know... I, you just can't look past Chelsea. I'm going to say 3-0 Chelsea. In the next game, we've got Palace versus West Ham. Two evenly matched teams, all right? They're in similar positions in the Premier League as well. And they're also similar teams in the fact that sometimes they turn up and they're absolutely amazing. And other times, they just can't be bothered and they, they just look lethargic, I suppose. They just look not there. So... This one's interesting, all right? Again, it could go either way, that stupid cliche, but it, it really could, all right? But it's at Selhurst Park, so for that reason, I'm probably going to go with Palace, but West Ham, we've seen them against the big teams, all right? They can destroy virtually anyone, so it's going to be a really, really tough game, but I'm going to say Palace are going to edge it 2-1. In the next game, we've got Everton versus Manchester United. Now, I'll have done, a f well, I will do a full match preview for this. That will be out at 10 p.m., no, 8 p.m. later today. So if you do want to watch that, then, yeah, check my channel at around 8 p.m. It should be uploaded. So I'm just going to briefly go over this. We cannot start the game like we did against Arsenal because the way Everton are playing at the minute, they are on stunning form. And let's not forget, all right, I know we were already fourth at the end of last season, but they beat us 3-0 at Goodison Park. So I am not taking Everton for granted. Barkley seems to be on sensational form. There's comparisons to Rooney, early Rooney, I mean, and um, 
maybe, maybe not. I mean, Rooney started when he was 16, Barkley's 21, but to be honest, it would be nice to see Barkley doing well because he's an England prospect and he's probably one of the better midfielders we've got in England. Just not in this game, all right? Have a quiet game this game. That would be brilliant. But uh, Lukaku as well, he's on unstoppable form. So it's a really, really tough encounter. And I, I really, really, really hope we get a win. But it's just not the right time to play Everton. Coming back off a 3-0 uh, defeat against Arsenal. So I'm going to say we're going to get a 1-1 draw at Goodison Park, which is still good in its own right. But we really need a win to push up to say we can win the title but anyhow I'm going to say 1-1 and as I say full match preview out of date today. So the next game Man City up against Bournemouth. Now you look at Man City and they've just the depth in their squad all right the depth in their squad they have to win the Premier League. I don't care if Aguero's injured and David Silva's injured yeah they're two best players but the replacements, they've got De Bruyne, they've got Sterling, they've got Yaya Toure, alright, they've got Boney up top, alright, their youth prospects aren't really getting a look in because they've got so much world-class talent in this squad. You look at players like Zuccolini, Pozzo, etc. These players aren't getting into it. Who's that? Is it... Is he Nigerian? I can't pronounce his name. The 19-year-old who scored within like one minute. Is it... It begins with I. I, I really can't pronounce his name but even he I doubt he'll get a look in in this game all right they've just got so much strength and depth and against Bournemouth who are without Callum Wilson their main man they got a 1-1 draw against Watford in their last game but you know you just can't look past City all right even without Aguero and Silva they are still the best team in the Premier League they have to win it all right there's just no excuses no matter how many injuries they get their squad depth is just better than any other team so they have to win and I'm going to say they're going to win 3-0 Next game, we've got Southampton against Leicester. This one, again, is a really interesting game. Leicester have been outstanding. Mares, Vardy, they've got so much uh, potential in the team, and they've also got the counter-attack threat. You look at Southampton, they're starting to come into form. They were a bit unlucky losing 3-2 to us, I'm not going to lie. They played well in that game, and they've continued that on. So players like Tadic, like Pella etc. They're, they're doing really, really well and I think Jay Rodriguez is back fully fit now so he'll probably help them. Their defence is pretty good as well so this is an even game. I'm going to say this is going to end 2-2. Alright, it's a really entertaining game to be honest. I think it'll be wide open 2-2 and that is my prediction. In the next game we've got West Brom going up against Arsenal. Now, <sighs> this one's got Arsenal battering all over it. Alright, they just Battered us 3-0, alright, there's there's no point in denying it. They did. In the first 30 minutes, they blew us away. Had we not played so shit in the 30 minutes, maybe we could have edged it after that because it was fairly even for the next 60, but if you lose the game 3-0 in the first 30 minutes, you're fucked. Anyhow, Arsenal did play very well, and this is what Arsenal do best. Everyone knows it. They blow away the lesser teams, and then they usually struggle against the top teams. So, obviously, they just beat us. So, I think... Uh, I think that this one's going to be a walk in the park, all right? No disrespect to West Brom. I think Pulis is doing a good job. Berahino seems as though he's actually got his head down and he's playing for West Brom. So, yeah, I'm going to say Arsenal are going to win this 4-1. All right, it's usually what Arsenal do. They'll rip apart a lesser team. Hopefully, though, in the next game after this, they'll return back to not Arsenal and get a shock loss. But we'll see what happens. In the next game, we've got Newcastle. Versus Norwich. Now, this could be an early relegation contender, but I think Norwich have quality and I think they're going to not be in the relegation battle towards the end of the season. I think they'll survive probably around week 30, week 32, they'll be safe and I think they'll finish late 14, 15, something around there. Newcastle, on the other hand, I don't know, I just think the mentality of the team is awful, alright, you look at players like Thovan coming in a tuxedo every week, alright, it's just, yeah, it was funny the first week, but, you know, it, it's not funny now, alright, you need to be earning your wage on the pitch, alright, the players just don't seem to be taking it seriously at Newcastle, and if they do lose this, really, you've got to have them down for relegation, because... <laughs> It's Norwich, no disrespect, but you have to be beating these teams around them. And now they've got Sunderland after this. And usually what happens is when a new manager comes in for Sunderland just before the derby, Sunderland really up for it and they win. So they really need a win before that derby so they can have some belief. And if they don't, I think they're down. I'm going to say they're not going to get a win, however. I think Norwich are really, really 
good, to be honest. They are a good side. They're really good uh, for what, you know, coming up from the championship. I really admire the brand of football they are playing. So I'm going to say it's a 1-1 draw. And, uh, yeah, that wouldn't be the best. For, well, I suppose it would be good for Norwich. For Newcastle, though, they really, really need a win. But I'm going to say 1-1. And in the last game, we've got Swansea going up against Stoke. Two teams who you would say are evenly matched, but looking at the table, Stoke are miles below Swansea. So Stoke really do need to start picking up results. Right? You look at the players they've got. Arnautovic, Bojan. They've got Shakiri, but I think he might be injured. I'm not... 100% sure though. They've got Juve. They've got a lot of attacking quality and they just seem, they can't get it into gear, right? They, they win one game, they lose the next and it's just, they can't get any consistency. Swansea on the other hand looked as though they were brilliant start of the season, then kind of tailored away and now they're coming back again. So Monte that's probably because Montero's back in the side. He's not injured. So I think he's going to be a real uh, good, not good player, he's going to be a good influence on the squad. IU has a chance of playing, but I'm not entirely sure. So for me, I'm going to say Swansea are going to edge this, but it's going to be a really close game, 2-1. Let me know what you think of all my predictions in the comments as always. And yeah, check out the match preview from Everton versus Manchester United. will be uploaded today. And yeah.